Hello and welcome to the next team talk. It is a special team talk since it is the first film with the Axiom Beta. Ah. We frequently receive emails. Manufacturer A released a new camera. B is the Axiom still relevant? Because this new camera has higher resolution or more FPS or more dynamic range, etc. etc. And we understand that people love comparing technical specs and make tables to put them side by side and then to decide who is the overwinner with weightings and everything. But we also do that. That's the, the system taught us that this is the way uh, to work. You have to compare things, you have to get aware, and you have to buy best value. It works for the established system of how products are created, marketed and sold. Unfortunately, the Axiom is simply incompatible with this system. We know this is a pretty bold and radical statement, but let us explain why. If there is a new image sensor coming out and if the documentation can be accessed and shared, the Axiom might soon support it. The rest of the camera stays the same. The modularity allows us to just swap the image sensor module. Red has promised a system like this already for a long time, but never really embraced modularity. You just created a system that you constantly have to throw large amounts of money into to stay up to date. And there's no diversity, there's just old and new, high-end, or artificially crippled, basically, to make it cheaper. With the Axiom, those new models will be very affordable, very fairly priced. And they don't even need to be coming from us. So anyone can create or sell those kind of modules. So there will be a competition ensuring fair prices and innovation. That's the Axiom ecosystem. Manufacturers sell new products with new features but don't change the old ones. Adding features to old products is not generating profits. Like if you think about the Canon 50D, Magic Lantern enabled recording raw video on this camera that wasn't even able to record any video at all. Something Canon would never do. The Axiom specs are and will constantly improve and evolve. The Axiom design is very FPGA centric. Quick reminder what the FPGA versus ASIC is. There's the uh, reprogrammable gate array, field programmable gate array, which is definable in software. You can change uh, pretty much anything that goes into the FPGA versus the ASIC that is kind of a set in so stone system that is very cheap to produce, but it's completely non-flexible. In contrast, CPUs or ASICs are dedicated processors designed for a particular purpose. They are also those ASICs optimized for image pipeline operations. Their development is very expensive, but then at high volume, one chip is very cheap to produce. ASIC-based designs can only be upgraded or changed with replacing the hardware. There's nothing reprogrammable about them, basically. RED makes heavy use of custom ASICs, for example. In the Axiom Beta, we currently use three FPGAs and not a single ASIC. This ensures maximum flexibility for the future. There's the story of our very own Oskar Spierenburg. Nobody knows how to pronounce his name, really who founded the Apertus project nine years ago. He bought a second-hand red one for a very reasonable price and hoped it would serve him well for a couple of feature film projects. Unfortunately, it broke and did not boot anymore on the second day of shooting. He had to send it back to red in the US and the replacement of the camera hardware, they charged him over $6,000. Plus, postponing of filming and rental of another camera for the next couple of days uh, made this second-hand purchase a very bad deal in the end. Now we are not saying that XM cameras can never fail, but since the hardware is very accessible and has been designed from the ground up to be easy to assemble and repair without any glued components and the blueprints and full documentation of every component publicly available. We actively encourage and train people to open up the hardware and learn what is where and how things interface with each other. There is a very high chance that you will be able to repair your Axiom on set in minimal time for, for minimal cost and you will be up and running again in no time in case anything does ever break. That's a real world value you should never underestimate. And then there's Magic Lantern. You get tons of free software upgrades, not just from us, from the, but from the entire community. That are not just bug fixes, but actual new features and new functionalities. Open source and therefore free of charge as well. 
We can only imagine what some people will come up with in the future. Something interesting we learned some time ago is that cinematographers are actually not looking for accurate color representation in the camera, but rather for a camera to produce pleasing colors. Meaning that, for example, skin tones fall within the typical hue and saturation area of flesh tones, even if they are actually not physically there. This is quite interesting, as so far we consider this kind of automatic image beautification something that only consumer devices would do. Camcorders don't expect the operator to have any idea what they are doing, other than pointing the camera at a subject. But now we see that each manufacturer has its kind of unique set of image beautification methods built into their camera, which is now called color science and defines the image characteristics uh, like film stock ones did. So with the XM we will probably offer switchable color profiles to choose between accuracy and different sets of pleasing skin tone profiles. But the non-creative process here is getting accurate colors. And that is simply done by collecting images of known color targets, like the Hutch HTC or the IT8 chart that come with measured reference data on the well-known lighting conditions that contain the, not only the color temperature, but even the full wavelength spectrum. This allows us to transform the relative raw sensor values into an absolute color space. The outcome is a 3x3 three three matrix for an approximation or a 3D lookup table for a more accurate result. The good thing with color reference charts is that you can actually measure how good the calibration worked as you know where your values should end up and so at the end you get a standard deviation or average error percentage. We identified that pixel non-linearity is the biggest source of error in the color calibration process and uh, since the process expects 100% linear sensor data, like uh, FPN actually affects this profiling method. The algorithms then try to overcompensate the image and quickly make it look more inaccurate than it was before. So what we're currently doing is uh, playing around with sensor Im register configurations, processing configurations, and uh, kind of finding how uh, different aspects of the physical sensor behavior relates to what we see in the images and then finding a setup that minimizes the error to the lowest possible value. Thank you for watching this team talk. We hope it has been entertaining and we will see each other next time.